Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we looked at the inverse square law for lighting. And that looked something like this. E is equal to I divided by D squared. And if you remember, I was the luminous intensity, how bright the light source was. E was the illuminance, in other words, how brightly lit a surface was and D was the distance between source and surface. And we kind of analyzed this formula, we played with numbers with it, and we saw the way that those numbers impacted on the total light level. Now, if you haven't watched those videos, please go back and watch them, because it's gonna help you to understand what we discuss in this video a little bit more. And in this video, we're going to discuss what happens to the light level as you get further and further away from being directly underneath the light. So in previous videos, we've calculated the light level at this point here, directly below the light fitting. And many people have asked quite rightly, well, how do we figure out what difference does it make as we get to a position where we're not directly under the light? Maybe the light is now coming down at an angle instead of perpendicular as it is there. And that's what we're gonna explore now. We're gonna have a look at something that is referred to as the cosine rule. Okay, so this is the cosine rule and if you go to Google and type in cosine rule, then you'll get lots of other things that relate to triangles, but not necessarily specifically this. So if you type in cosine rule for illuminance, okay, or cosine rule for lighting or something like that, then you'll come out with more information on the correct thing that you're searching for. So as you search for more information, just bear in mind that's gonna help you out enormously with this subject. Okay, so we've said that this is the cosine rule for illuminance. Okay, so where does the cosine part come in? Well, we've already mentioned that the light shining from here to here is hitting the surface at an angle. And that really is the angle that we're interested in. Now, this might seem a little bit contradictory what I'm about to tell you, okay? But just bear with me because it will make sense as we go through this. So. What we're interested in really is the uh, light level over here. So we're interested in the angle that the light is hitting the surface at. Now, most people would look at that drawing and go, okay, so we're interested in that angle there. We're not. What we're interested in is the angle from perpendicular. Okay, the angle from perpendicular. So in other words, it is the angle here. Okay, so how far from perpendicular the light is hitting the surface at. So that is the angle that we're interested in. Now, when you do your exams and assessments at college and your worksheets, you won't see that angle marked up or mentioned. What you will see marked up and mentioned is this angle here. Okay, so that's the angle that we're interested in. But the good thing is, is that both of these angles are actually exactly the same. So this angle and this angle are the same. Because you've got a parallel line here to this one here, when I was at school, this was referred to as a Z angle. I don't know if they've kind of changed the, the wording on that now. But basically what it means is if you've got two parallel lines and then another line crossing over them, the angles formed by those lines will be the same. So in other words, that angle is the same as that angle. So while it's this angle that is affecting how brightly lit that surface is, we can transfer its qualities from here up to here. So we can actually use this angle and that's the one that you'll see marked up in your essays and assignments, even though it's actually this one that we're kind of interested in that's making the difference. So why would this angle make a difference? What impact does that have on our lighting? Well, let me illustrate. Now, this is not uh, a perfect explanation, okay, but it does kind of give us an insight into what's going on here. Now, in the previous video, we calculated light levels directly below the light source. In other words, we calculated the light level directly at the center of this pool of light here. Now, as you get further and further away from the center, the light level gets lower and lower and lower. And obviously it cuts off here because of the shape of the torch head and the lens that's in there and all that sort of stuff. However, let me illustrate um, what's actually happening. As we increase this angle, which is the same as this angle, watch what happens to the field of light here, the pool of light here, watch what happens. So as we change the angle that the light is shining on the surface on, can you see what's happened to the pool of light now? Can you see how 
Over this side, we've got this kind of fuzzy edge and actually you can see that the light level is dropping off significantly. Now there's two reasons for that. The first one is that we're getting further and further away from the light source. And we know that as this number gets bigger and bigger, this number gets smaller and smaller. Effectively, we're increasing the distance from source to surface. However, there's something else happening. Look at the overall pool of light. What do you notice about it from there to there? What happens to that pool of light? Well, the area that it covers gets bigger. And of course, the area is getting bigger. It means that the same amount of light is effectively falling on a larger area, which means that we're actually losing light level on that surface because it's more spread out effectively. And so the angle that this light is shining onto the surface at will get massively increased. And, and this kind of effect is being, increased, it is being um, carried out on lots of little points all over this area of lighting, all over this pool of lighting. But that's what's going on. And you can see as we make the angle bigger and bigger, it covers a larger and larger area, which means that the overall illuminance gets lower and lower, especially the further away you get from the center. So let's put that back to where it was and turn that off. Okay. And let's have a little think about how this is going to impact on our calculation. Because what we need to do now is we need to modify our original calculation. What we're going to do is Instead of just having i divided by d squared, we're going to add something else onto this top line. And that something else is times by the cosine of theta. Okay. Now you may be thinking, well, why the cosine of theta? Why is that having an impact? What we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of examples, which hopefully will show that this does work. This is true. And then we'll take it to an extreme point that kind of reveals a very deep truth about this formula and the way that it works. So let's have a look at the drawing that we put on the board earlier. Now we've got some information here. We know that this is equal to 1500 candelas. So we've got a light source here that is equal to 1500 candelas. I have to figure my writing there. So we've got 1500 candelas and we have got a distance from source to surface of four meters. Okay, so we've got a distance of four meters. What we've also got here uh, is some more information required. So we're going to have to add on to this some more distances. Now, I'm not just going to make these numbers up. These numbers actually matter. So I'll stick those onto the board now. OK, so if we wanted to figure out what the light level was here at this position, we'll call this E1, the illuminance at position 1, and we'll call this E2, the illuminance at position two. If I wanted to calculate the value here, that would be really easy because all I've got to do is do uh, I divided by D squared. So that's nice and straightforward. But if I want to figure out what the light level is over here, I'm missing a piece of information because I can't use this value for the distance anymore because the distance from source to surface is longer here. Now, uh, in some questions that you'll get in kind of harder exams at higher levels, you'll be given a, a small amount of information and you'll have to apply some Pythagoras maybe to try and figure out what some missing values are before you can solve the calculation. We're not going to do that in this case. I'm going to give you the numbers. Okay. So in this case, this side here is going to be five meters long and we'll call that D2. So we'll say that's five meters long. And I'm not even going to ask you to figure out what the angle is. I'm going to tell you what the angle is. So the angle is 36.87 degrees. Okay. So we'll put that there. Theta is equal to 36.87 degrees. Okay, so we've got uh, everything we need now to be able to figure out what the illuminance is here and what the illuminance is here. So let's do this first of all. Now this is going to look a bit weird when I write this down for the first time. So just bear with me. I'm going to put E1, so that's the illuminance at position 1, how brightly lit that point is, is equal to I the light source times by the cosine of theta divided by, in this case, it's going to be d1 squared. Okay. Now you might be looking at this and thinking, well, why do we have cos theta there? What, what's cos theta all about? Well, if we look at this, we've got 1500 times by the cosine of theta. So what's theta when we're looking directly below the light source here? Well, this angle would effectively shrink down to zero, wouldn't it? That angle would become nothing because there's no uh, deviation from perpendicular there. It's just coming straight down, so that angle would become zero. So we can actually put 
cosine of zero into our calculation there. And then we're going to divide that by four squared, distance one squared. So let's put some, some other numbers in here just to, just to make this a little bit more interesting. We'll put in 1500 times by the cosine of theta. Now when you put the cosine of, sorry that should say cosine of zero, my apologies. Okay, so when you put the cosine of zero into your calculation, okay, what you'll find is that the cosine of zero is actually equal to one. So the cosine of zero is equal to one. So this becomes one. So what effect does that one have on our overall calculation? Well, it has absolutely no effect, does it? It doesn't change anything. It doesn't change this top number. And so actually it's almost like that doesn't exist, which effectively is the effect we want it to have because we're just looking directly below the light fitting like we were in previous videos. So we don't want this number to affect this particular calculation. So that will be 1500 divided by 16. Now, if I was feeling braver, I would uh, do that in my head, but I'm not, so I won't. 1500 times one divided by 16 is going to give us 93.75 lux, like that, 93.75 lux. What we've then got is we're gonna think about, well, what's the light level at position E2? Okay, so let's try and figure out what the light level will be there. So we go, the light level at E2 will be equal to I times by the cosine of theta divided by, in this case, it's gonna change, it's gonna become D2 squared. So we're interested in this distance here. So let's try and figure out what's going on with that. So 1500 times by the cosine of 36.87 divided by, in this case, it's gonna be five squared. So again, let's kind of put an extra stage into our calculation here. Let's figure this out. If we do 1500 times by, and then we want to figure out what the cosine of 36.87 is. So we go cos 36.87. And remember, we're just saying to the calculator, what is the cosine value of the angle 36.87 degrees? And it'll spit the number back out as. Now the actual value, what it absolutely should be based on the sides of this triangle, is 0.8. So that comes out at 0.79999. I think that we can call that 0.8, can't we? We're happy with that, yeah? So we'll call that 1500 times by 0.8 divided by 5 squared is 25. Okay, so we've got 1500 times by 0.8 divided by 25. So can you see now that this number has now become a number that is less than 1? Now, when you multiply by a number that is between zero and one, the effect of that is to make the number that you are multiplying smaller. So 1500 times by 0.8 is a smaller number than 1500. In fact, it's 1200. So let's just confirm that on the calculator. 1500 times by 0.8 is 1200. So this becomes 1200 divided by 25 and 1200 divided by 25 is going to give us 48. So we've got 48 lux. So in other words, our light level at position E1 is 93.75 lux and our light level at position E2 is 48 lux. So it's not quite, but it's almost halved. It's dropped down significantly from there to there just by taking a short walk from position uh, one to position two here. So why has that happened? Well, there's two reasons. Number one, we've got a little bit further away from the light source, and we know from previous videos that a small change in the distance can result in a, quite a big change in the light level down at the uh, surface that we're measuring on. And the other thing that's changed it is the light is now hitting the surface at an angle. So just like we demonstrated earlier on with our torch, instead of shining directly onto the surface, it's shining at an angle, which means that the light level overall is reduced at every single point within that pool of light. So that's why the light level has almost, but not quite halved from here to here. Now, if we kind of take this logic to an extreme, we find kind of a hidden interesting truth in this. If we were to consider, let's say that this light fitting is giving out uh, light levels uh, sort of in a, uh, a semicircular kind of a semispherical field effectively so it's coming down across that way and literally out the side as well 
if we were to increase that angle there to 90 degrees, then what would happen to the illuminance when that ray of light hit the surface that we're measuring it on? Well, of course, it's, it's never going to hit that surface, is it? Because when this gets round to 90 degrees, the light is traveling parallel to the surface. And so it's never going to hit it. I'm sure lots of people will tell me about the nature of gravity and how it can bend light and effectively you'll never get a parallel path and stuff like that. But we're not worrying about that. We're just talking about it in theory here. And so if we did that, the number that we would put in here would become cos 90. And what is the cosine value of 90 degrees? Put it into your calculator and you'll find out. So the cosine of 90 degrees is zero, which means that the light level here would become times by zero. The, the cosine value would become zero. So we'd have 1500 times zero. And of course, when you multiply anything by zero, it becomes zero, which means that none of that light would ever actually hit the surface, which makes sense because it's traveling parallel to the surface. So just a, a nice little extra kind of hidden insight into the way this works. And that's why we use the cosine values effectively. So hopefully from this video, we've seen uh, the value of understanding this formula. We've seen that by modifying our inverse square law formula to include the cosine of the angle theta, which is actually this angle here, but we can treat it as being this angle here, we can calculate what the illuminance will be at this point here. And this is a like a real classic exam question, uh, whichever kind of uh, field of electrical study you're doing. Um, th this is a, a real classic question to figure out the lighting values at two points. And actually in, in some level three courses, it gets even trickier than this. And, and we will develop this idea a little bit further. Now, what we're gonna find as this unfolds and as future videos take us a little bit further into these calculations and it gets a little bit more complicated, we're gonna to start to realize that actually using this method for calculating light levels is a little bit limited and there are one or two problems with it. However, what we're gonna be doing then is looking at an alternative way of calculating light levels on surfaces. However, that is for a much future video. From this video, take away that formula. Try and get that embedded in your head and try and remember that this is the angle that we'll be using the values of in our calculations. We'll look at some slightly more complex uh, ways of doing this in future videos, but for now all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching.